In this episode of the Crash Course Playlist, I've decided to tackle, let's be honest, a rather primitive subject for most of us who have been building PCs for quite a while, but for those of you who are watching this channel, watching this particular video, and who haven't tackled a PC build yet, I understand you're likely nervous, you're anxious, you're not sure if the parts you've picked are even going to work together. Uh, I have plenty of friends back home who message me all the time asking, Greg, does this part work with this part? Uh, you know, is this the best value, this and that? I'm not going to be able to uh, tackle every question you might have in this video, but I am going to get through the basics with you. Um, just, just show you in general that this PC building thing is, is really not that complicated. I remember back when I built my first PC, uh, I had watched enough videos, I had a pretty good idea of what was compatible with what and, and what I wanted to build in terms of uh, my price category, my performance category. And uh, I used a website called PC Part Picker to just develop my list, make sure that I had the price right, and uh, that I could find those parts for the lowest prices on any given site. So that's what PC Part Picker's for. We're gonna be using that in this video. I'm gonna have two uh, different screens side by side. You're looking at them right now. And on the, let's say the left screen, I'm gonna be doing uh, an AMD build. And on the right screen, I'll be doing an Intel build. Uh, the left screen will be, I guess, just an FX uh, build, maybe an 8300, 8350. And then the right side will be a Skylake Intel build, probably an i5, 6500, I think we'll go with. Uh, so you're gonna be looking at that screen for a majority of this video. I'm just gonna walk you through the steps that I go through when I build a PC. And if you're looking to build an AMD uh, PC that's, that's relatively modern, then you can follow along with the steps on the left side. And if you're interested in an Intel PC, particularly a Skylake build, then you can follow along on the right. So both sides of the aisle should be rather satisfied here, even though it, it, it's gonna be a stretch to, to justify an FX build at this point, just because then it's hopefully right around the corner, looking around early 2017. Uh, people should be getting their Zen chips in the mail. It's exciting. Should be good news for the CPU market in general. Bring those Intel prices down a bit, maybe. So what we're gonna do is swivel on over to this side here, because I should scoot up a little bit. And uh, right now you're looking at both screens. So like I said, the left side here is going to be the AMD build. And the right side is going to be the uh, Intel build. Went ahead and turned the studio light off just so you know it's not blinding you and uh, don't worry I'm not going to be on the screen for very long. Uh, so the first thing that you want to do when you go to this website here, it's linked in the video description by the way, they're not sponsoring this video or anything like that. This is just a useful website that I think uh, all beginners should, uh, should, should use when you're building a PC. Uh, you want to, well let's see, I'm not going to have that here because I'm logged into my account. Uh, but you're going to click start a new part list and that's what we'll do for both of these here. So start new part list and start new part list. Okay, now this is your this is your format, your template, okay? And I recommend that you pick your parts in this order. So start with the CPU, then start with a cooler if you if you choose one, I recommend that you do. Uh, and then your motherboard, memory, storage, a video card, a case, power supply. Those are your key components right there, okay? So the first thing you need to decide when you're looking to build a PC is what kind of CPU you want to use. I have a, uh, a video that you can find in the card right here that should help you kind of figure out what CPU you want given the expectations you have for games and for just raw compute performance. Uh, so let's do for the AMD PC here. Cool thing is you can just search for whatever you want. Let's do FX, okay, and right on top there, FX8350. So let's go ahead and select that. So we have an FX8350 over here, four gigahertz, eight core processor for about $139. Now the cool thing is PC Part Picker will select the website that has it for the lowest price. So if we click on, it's right here, this little uh, settings icon. If I, click, if I click that, I can choose what vendor I want to purchase the, the CPU from to kind of give me, like, let's say I'm only gonna purchase from Amazon a Newegg because maybe I have an Amazon Prime membership and a Newegg Premier membership. Uh, so <clears throat> let's just select Amazon just for kicks. So you can see it overrode the price and it showed you the most current uh, up-to-date price on the FX8350 right now for $147. Uh, so that's cool. You can select the, the, you know, the merchant, the, the vendor of the part and it'll, it'll be for the most part accurate with the price. And if, it, and if it's out of stock too, it'll tell you that. So that's, that's nice as well. And over here on the Intel side, let's do an i5-6500. That seems to be a fairly popular um, quad core CPU these days, especially for gamers. I think it's a, a great budget CPU. So that's it. We have both of our processors. Now let's choose Let's choose a cooler. I recommend choosing a cooler. Uh, that's not. Don't use a stock cooler. I just I wouldn't use one. Let's see. Uh, Hyper 212 Evo is a good choice. We'll just go ahead and throw that in there. 
And uh, this one here, we don't really need anything beefy out. Let's do the C7. Both of these are about the same price. So you can see on the left here, Outlet PCs selling it for $29.88, but be careful, this is after a $10 mail-in rebate. Uh, so that's why you see that promo right there. This is after that. So you're really gonna be paying 40 bucks and then like 10 years from now, you'll get that money back from the rebate, uh, if you even mail the rebate to begin with. So let's just do Amazon once more there. And, <clears throat> okay, you, oh, whoops, what did I just do? Okay, sorry about that. I had to open up two separate uh, browsers. I'm rocking Edge on the left here and uh, Chrome on the right. For some reason, whenever I had two Chrome tabs open, it was overriding my CPUs with the latest I had selected. So it was assuming I was making the same list on two separate, uh, two separate windows. But now that I'm using Edge on one, it doesn't appear to be overriding anything. So everything should be independent, one side for each. Uh, now, th this is the cool thing I was just talking about. With PC Part Picker, I can, uh, I can select Choose Motherboard, which is the next step in the process. And the cool thing is, it's only going to show me motherboards that are compatible with the processor. Okay, so I don't have to worry about you know figuring out you know, the fact that the 8350 is an AM3 Plus motherboard. I don't even need to know that in order to build a PC on PC Part Picker. It's going to do all that work for me. Uh, so any of these motherboards here will work out of the box with an FX 8350. Let's just choose uh, the 970 Gaming. I'm, I'm, I've owned a, a motherboard very similar to that one. So 95 bucks, outlet PC, and uh, we're good to go. And on the right side here, same thing. So we can choose anything from a Z170 to an H170 to an H110 to a B150. Uh, all of these are gonna work just fine. Uh, we're not gonna be, let's assume we're not gonna base clock overclock the i5, so we're just gonna, I'll tell you what, we'll do something different. Let's choose an ITX motherboard. I wanna show you how uh, PC Part Picker does this. So ASRock H110 for $70, $3 right there, Mini ITX, okay? So there we go, plus we have a Mini ITX cooler, so that kind of works out. Now, memory, uh, this is the same same way. So you don't have to worry about whether you need DDR3 or DDR4, uh, it's gonna tell you, based on your motherboard choice, what RAM you can use with, uh, with your platform. And uh, you can see anything DDR3 basically here. Let's just choose whatever's on top, the Kingston HyperX Fury Blue. Ew, that's gonna look a little weird because it's blue. I'm, I'm picky. All right, let's find something red. Uh, and it'll, it's cool, it'll, it'll tell you that too. Um, so black, black will be fine. Let's just do right there, HyperX Black. A little more expensive, but whatever. And over here, you're gonna see that we'll need DDR4. So DDR4, <clears throat> let's just choose a Vixer Core. That's a one eight gig dim, whatever, we can do it, all right? So there we go, DDR4 2400 megahertz for 42 bucks, Outlet PC and the new egg over here on the right for $56. More expensive, just whatever. I wouldn't recommend that for that price, but for the purposes of demonstrations here, that's perfectly acceptable. Now let's move on to storage. Now in the case of storage, it's not really gonna matter. If you have an, a really old platform, you might need IDE, which is parallel ATA, it's not SATA. Uh, those are the long ribbon cables for data transfer. If you're building a really old PC, I don't even recommend using PC Part Picker. I wouldn't uh, suggest doing that for your first PC build anyway. Um, but it would tell you nonetheless if you had an incompatibility there. So let's say your motherboard doesn't support SATA for whatever reason, uh, then you won't be able to select a drive that uh, works only with SATA. So <clears throat> in this case, let's just choose a Western Digital one terabyte blue. Actually, you know what? We're going to choose four of them. <laughs> let's just do let's just do four. So two. There's probably a quicker way to do this than the way I'm doing it, but whatever. Okay, so we're going to choose four of these. Now that's a lot of hard drives. Okay. That's, that's four terabytes, but it's not one four terabyte drive, it's four individual one terabyte drives. So PC Part Picker is gonna warn you if you have an incompatibility, right? Remember that. It doesn't matter what it is, by the way. It could just be, uh, it could just be a case, it could be a power supply, you know, concern, something like that. So if I go here to choosing cases, <clears throat> let's say I want the S340. Great choice, right? $67, okay. Now you see this warning right here. These parts have potential issues and compatibilities. Slide down here to the bottom. You'll see the, the warning message, one additional internal three and a half inch uh, drive bay is needed. So that means that just natively, that, that case is not gonna support four hard disk drives. That's good to know. So I can go back up here and say, okay, well, <clears throat> I'll take one of those off. And then boom, that compatibility goes away. Don't worry about the BIOS update. That's something totally different. 
uh, most of the time you'll be you'll be good to go there. So that's something else to keep in mind. You know, you don't have to worry about you know is this going to work? Is this not? If it doesn't work, more than likely PC Part Picker is going to tell you. It's a good indicator that you have uh, some kind of compatibility issue, and uh, it's suggested that you follow those guidelines just in case, especially if you're not familiar with building PCs and this is your first time. <clears throat> Over here, let's just choose. We're going to go with solid state here because we are building a uh, a rather compact PC, I suppose. And what do we have here? 525 crucial, 125 bucks. Okay. All right. So that's our storage drive for that one. And okay, we skipped the video card here. We haven't even gotten to the case on this side. Uh, but let's do the video card next. Okay. So this is where you can go wild. Uh, I don't recommend for your first build you just SLI or crossfire two cards, especially if you uh, aren't familiar with PCIe lanes and how those work and how those might potentially bottleneck your system, especially if you have other PCI cards uh, in your system. Uh, so let's just let's just do one video card uh, for this particular build here. Something like an, a 1060 or 480 would be a decent choice. 480, and what's a good price for a 480? This one's not bad. Gigabyte G1 Gaming for 190 bucks. All right. So there we go. That's it. That's all we need, and we can find the cheapest price on Newegg. Over here, let's do something a bit different. Uh, we're going to want a small form factor graphics card, um, mini. Okay, so you can see the series here. The Zotac 1050, that's a little underkill. Uh, we could go for something like a 1070. Let's do a 1070, but do a, a small form factor 1070. So you can see the series here. It'll kind of give you an idea of, uh, of what size you're going after. And we see the Zotac one. Go ahead and mark that one up. Okay, not necessarily a small card. You can actually click on this too and, and see <laughs> not a high resolution photo. Uh, but you get an idea of what it looks like, and you can always follow the links too. So Newegg's is right here. If we click on that, it'll take us straight to that exact card that we selected earlier. There's a Zotac 1070 for a little different, uh, slightly different price, but whatever, you get the point. So there we go. And next, for the case here, we're going to want an ITX case. So here's another cool thing about the website. You can kind of sort through these based on all these different categories up top. Uh, you can choose whether or not you want a power supply included. It'll only show those cases up top that have power supplies. Uh, you can select types. So right now I have it sorted to where the largest cases are on top. And if you select it again, uh, the smallest cases are on top. So the Thermal, uh, Thermal Take Core X1, for example, the BitPhoenix Prodigy. You know, we see a lot of these cases that are that are fairly small. Uh, let's see here, the NCXT Manta. That'll be that'll be a cool one. Let's go ahead and throw that in there. All right. And then lastly, power supply. Uh, if you're concerned about power supply choice, I have a card right here, a video that should help you out uh, in kind of choosing what kind of power supply you might need for your system. Uh, most of the time, though, if you're just buying a single GPU and a single CPU for your particular rig, and it's a fairly modern rig, especially if it's an Intel rig, anything around 500 or 600 watts should be perfectly fine. Uh, if you're using a very old graphics card, might be power hungry, maybe something like six or 700 watts, uh, especially if you're going for like an uh, R9 Fury or something like that, I recommend at least a 600 watt for that. Remember, TDP does not mean total power draw, that just means the amount of power that's dissipated in the form of heat. So your, your, your card or whatever you're uh, looking at will actually consume more power than that TDP rating. It's just the, the laws of nature, the second law of thermodynamics in particular. Uh, but for uh, power supply choice with part picker, it's really nice because all you have to do, once you have everything else selected, is click on choose a power supply and it'll only show you power supplies that have enough wattage to sustain, su sustain, to sustain your system. Uh, you can see the bare minimum that it's recommending right now is 430 watts. And uh, that, that would be cutting it pretty close. We'll be just on the edge of our efficiency curve there. So let's go down here to, let's just choose a 500 watt. Now some of these won't have prices. It's either because they're not currently available, maybe they're out of stock, or they can't find these particular units on any of the sites in their database. Um, you can see they have quite a, quite a few uh, merchants available. If you click this list here, you can scroll, you know, all of these, they're, they're pretty much looking at nonstop. Uh, but if you have uh, that part somewhere, let's say you find it on Newegg for 180 bucks, but it's not ringing up for that, uh, then you can manually enter your price here and that'll uh, be included in your total down below. Uh, but let's see here, let's choose the Rosewell Glacier 500M. This is a semi-modular power supply for 45 bucks. Not a bad deal there. Okay, and there we're good to go. Now, over here, 
I expect that we'll be able to choose something a bit lower in wattage. Yep, there we go. So 300 watts is the bare minimum that PC Part Pick is recommending for this build. Uh, and that's because the 1070 is a, a very efficient graphics card when it comes to power consumption. And uh, the i5-6500 practically sips on power. So 300 watts, that's cutting it super close anyway. I mean, I, I wouldn't go for that low. Uh, but you would be safe with around 400, 430 watts. So just for kicks, we're going to choose the Corsair CX430M. And there we go. Okay, so what we've just done is uh, put together two separate PCs, uh, their lists, on two separate screens that will work right out of the box. If you assemble all of them together into a case, as long as you install an operating system, there you go. That's it. Uh, these are the parts that you'll need. Uh, the optical drive bay is optional. Operating system, that's a separate thing. That's software, not hardware. Um, monitor, you know, all this extra stuff is is extra. It's not the computer itself. It's either a peripheral or something supplementary to the hardware. Ooh, I didn't realize that I had a Hyper 212 Evo there. That's a little weird. Okay, there we go. But this is the gist of PC building. In my opinion, if, especially if you're a newbie, it should start right here on PC Part Picker. It's where I started and it, it really got the ball rolling for me. It, it gave me an idea of what parts would work with, with what parts and you know just the, the price to performance ratios of different things. Where to buy components is another big uh, incentive uh, to use PC Part Picker. I just, I really like the, the design. I love the list. I love the way that they've set all of this up. Uh, and it's something that I definitely 100% recommend to anybody looking to build a PC for at least the first time. Uh, another cool thing here, you can see the price changes over time. Uh, you can see it hasn't really been much of a uh, fluctuation in those parts. But okay, if you want to see right here, the Gigabyte RX 480, you can see right there, November 17th, it, it actually got a bit cheaper. And then uh, it, it started creeping back up. So around right here would have been the best time to buy. And that actually is... Cyber Monday, so that that's actually really cool. Uh, well, Cyber Monday, Thanksgiving weekend, that kind of area. Now this is the total price, so it says 800 bucks up here, but that's only because it's adding each of these up to the total. And you can see right now it's 772, which is just below 800 bucks on the chart. Uh, but this is cool, it gives you an idea of how part prices change over time as well. There's a lot of stuff packed into this website. Uh, you can also just go back to the homepage here and see uh, build guides from, from other people who have contributed to the website. You can see their list uh, online and, and see how their prices kind of match up to yours. Uh, lots of cool pictures, you know, lots of giveaways, things like that are all on this site. It's all on PC Part Picker. It's linked in the video's description. I suggest checking it out. If, if you're looking to build your first PC ever, use this website. It is a game changer. Now I'm aware that I didn't go through every single thing there is to consider when building a PC. That video would be hours long. This is a crash course video by the way, uh, but at least this gets you started. So the PC Part Picker website is the most powerful tool you have at your disposal, especially if you're new to building PCs. I still use PC Part Picker from time to time just because it's nice to see the price breakdown and where the best place uh, is to buy that particular part. I've also linked videos in this video description that should give you an idea of what to expect when it comes to raw CPU performance, as well as uh, the kinds of frame rates you should expect from any given platform, from any given graphics card. It's all in the, in the description. Check those out. Uh, all of those videos, plus this one here, should give you just a, a well-rounded scope, uh, just a well-rounded view of, of what to expect with any particular parts list that you decide to put together in PC Part Picker. That's the one thing that the website doesn't do is tell you how powerful that system is, relatively speaking, uh, but that's what videos like the ones in the description are for. Check those out. Check out other uh, videos, other benchmarks on YouTube. You get an idea for what to expect, how much you should pay for a system that you're looking to build, and for uh, a resolution that you're looking to game in with any particular set of settings. I just realized my glasses are super dirty. There we go. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Give it a dislike if you feel the complete opposite or if you felt lost in this video, in which case I failed you and I do apologize. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Stay tuned for, I keep teasing it, I know, the CryoRig R1 review. I'm waiting on Be Quiet to send their beastly air cooler as well so that I can compare it to this thing, see which one comes out on top. I'm sure they're both insanely awesome air coolers. I just need, you know, I need a, I guess, a baseline to compare this to. And I'm also going to compare both of them to the Kraken X62 behind me. See just how close an air cooler like this can get to an all-in-one combo. All, what do you even call it? They're all-in-one water loops, all-in-one radiator combo loop, all-in-ones. All I'm just going to stay with all-in-one. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for learning with us.